Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am your yarn host Jennifer. Now if you've been around any time in the past several videos you're gonna know that we are talking about my experience at the James River Yarn Crawl. I, every time I want to say James City. <laughs> James River Yarn Crawl. These glasses are giving me a headache and I know I'm gonna have to put them back on to relabel. So I'm just gonna give myself an eye break. Just a little eye break. Oh makes my face look totally different when I pull on the bridge of my nose. <laughs> I give myself wrinkles. <laughs> Alright, so today's... Now if you don't know, if you haven't been watching and you're brand new here, hi, welcome to this insane asylum that we live in. Um, there's probably going to be interruptions because I have three dogs and two children home. One of which is an adult, but I mean, that's just the way things are going today. I'm filming a bunch of videos in one day and everybody needs my attention, probably all at the same time. So, um, I went to the James River Yarn Crawl this past weekend and it's still going on during the vid these videos. So you still have a chance if you live in the Virginia area to go to some of these shops. The shops are from, they stretch from Richmond to Virginia Beach and all of the shops that I'm talking about this week are shops that were part of the yarn crawl and I added an extra shop in that was not part of the yarn crawl and that will be in tomorrow's video. Um, she was just an extra shop that was not part of the yarn crawl that I included as a part of my yarn crawl experience. And then the last day of the week is another shop that we went to that was not an official yarn shop. It was a thrift craft reuse store that we visited that we only get to go to every once in a great while because it's kind of far away from my house. Um, today's two video or today's two shops that we visited were Center of the Yarniverse, which is I think is in Ashland. Center of the Yarniverse. Yeah, Ashland. And the shop I'm Putting with that one to talk about today is Baba Sheep. Baba Sheep is in Norfolk. Norfolk? I got pages and pages and pages of notes. <laughs> I made so many notes to prepare myself for this trip. Baba Sheep is in Norfolk, yes. Alright, now, before I went to any of these shops, I made a shopping list. I visited the websites and I was like, what do they have? What do I want to look at? What trunk shows are they having? I watched the Zoom call meeting, so I saw what they were trying to show us, what they were featuring, and I made a detailed shopping list, and I kept a very tight, it wasn't tight, it was a strict budget. I had X amount of dollars to spend per shop. If I didn't spend all of the money, like I was under budget at two of the shops, so I took that money and I rolled it over into a different shop. So... I was very happy with the way I planned things out. I was very happy the way I budgeted it. And I was very happy with my... It wasn't an official shopping list. What it was was check out these specific yarns. I like them. I did a lot of research before I did this trip. So that I did not overspend. Or so that I knew going in what I was looking for. I made a detailed list. I wanted DK or worsted. I wanted yarn to spin or uh, wool to spin with. Um, I wanted bright colors. I wanted something that kind of could go into a bigger project. I had all of these rules. That did not make my experience restrictive. It did not make me feel like... I, it actually took a lot of the pressure off my shoulders. So a lot of people were like... I had a comment in particular that said, um, I don't do all that. I just go and enjoy myself. Okay, that's fine for you. If you just go and enjoy yourself. But for me... I have the freedom of knowing I am not going to overspend. I have the freedom of I can go in and look exact and not miss out on what I really want because I found something else that distracted me. And so for me, it worked out for the way my brain worked. It worked out perfectly. So if your brain works differently, cool. If, you don't, if you're not a planner, you're a fly by the seat of your pants person, I am too, generally. This worked really well for me to keep me on task, to keep me on budget specifically because I am very much a oh, gotta have gotta have gotta have that is actually what happened to me in Baba Sheep is I 
Didn't go over budget, but I spent more than I wanted. I bought more than I planned on buying at her store. And we'll talk about that. But I'm going to start with Center of the Universe. They're in Ashland. Um, these stores are not in order by which ones I, I visited. Um, I paired them up in different ways so that I could get the best content out of the, the, the store visits. So... I am going to insert clips randomly in here. I don't know where they're going to be. None of that is planned out. I'm just going to edit the way I can. Center of the Universe. First thing I'm going to say, it is in a a complex of stores. It is in a very small parking lot. And the building appears to be old. The lighting in there was very bright and fluorescent, and the store was a large space. It was very tight and compact because there were so many people in the shop. And I think if I were to do a yarn crawl again, I would do it during the weekdays because the weekend was just insanity. There were so many people. They also are having different events on different days, so... The day that we went to Center of the Universe, they had a food truck outside that was an ice cream truck. And I have food allergies, and I'm also a diabetic, so the ice cream truck was not going to happen for me. However, it was our second shop, and Little Man, who is ADHD and has some struggles, he was being really good, so I rewarded him with ice cream. And I told him, if you're good in the store, I will buy you ice cream when we're done. And he actually got a flight of ice cream. And it was four cups with four flavors of ice cream. And he was very a happy kid. <laughs> like It made him so happy. The next day, which is not when we were there, they actually had an alpaca to come visit. <sighs> come and pet and love and hug and take pictures with a live alpaca. Which I thought was pretty cool. And I almost stopped the second time to just see the alpaca. But, I mean, that's fine. <laughs> Now, as I have been saying, I had a list of what I was looking for in their shop. And they had, the one thing I will say, the store was tight. It was very, they had a couple of trunk shows going on, which I think made it more crowded than it normally would have been. And there were a lot of people in the store, in every spot of the store. There was a lot of people. So I think the combination of the extra trunk shows and the extra people that probably are not there on a normal day, it it was a little bit claustrophobic to me. And I really struggled being a fat person getting in and weaving in between where the trunk shows were. With that being said, I would absolutely visit the store again on an off day. Um the the fluorescents were a little bit hard to do like it was really fluorescent in there the br lights were really bright um it, it was bright and airy for like to look at yarn and see beautiful colors because baba sheep was exact opposite it was very dark in there and i struggled to see i have struggles with my vision anyway and so I, there was a couple times I actually took yarn over by the window, which is the front door. And so they're watching you, like, hoping you don't steal. That's not, I didn't feel that at all. But that's in my head. I'm thinking they're going to think I'm trying to walk out the front door. But I had to keep walking over by the window. They desperately need to brighten up their store. Like, it's really dim in there. To see, like, I would take the yarn over and I'd be, like, trying to see the, uh, get a correct feel of the color of the yarn because it was so dark in their store. Like, it was dark in there. It was very bougie, boutique-y feeling, and it was beautiful, but it was really dark. Now, Center of the Universe could have took some of their lights out and given them to Baba Sheep, and then everything would have been balanced out for me. But again, I have sensory issues, so what bothers me might not bother the normal person. This is just from... A neurodivergent person's perspective. All right, so Center of the Universe was greeted immediately at the door. Um, they were giving away tickets. You got a ticket just for walking in. I got a ticket. Mr. Cinnamon got a ticket. Little Man got a ticket for a prize. 
I don't know what the prize was that day. I didn't win it, but they were giving out a prize every day. Um, I was not only greeted by the person giving out tickets, I was greeted by several, they had a lot of staff on hand and they were making sure people were having baskets. Like if she saw someone with a handful of yarn, she would go and grab these baskets and hand them to people. I'm like, do you need a basket? Do you? It was very, it was a welcoming, it was a very welcoming place. Everyone was super friendly. When I checked out, the staff behind the desk was super friendly, chatty. They didn't care that there's 15 people in line. They were just making sure Every single person that got to the cash register was greeted, welcomed, talked to. It was amazing. And I really like the staff at Center of the Universe. The only thing I did not like is that it was very claustrophobic in there. It's the only problem I have with the store. Um, my plan going in... <sighs> My plan going in was to look at the yarn, the um, trunk shows. Their trunk shows were Fredericksburg Fiber Works, or Fredericksburg Fibers. So it's FXBG, Fredericksburg Fibers. And the reason I wanted to check her out is because I live in Fredericksburg. <laughs> so I'm going to support my local people, and I'm going to support my local local people. And... I actually talked to her. She was very nice. She had beautiful colors. I was looking for DK. I ended up buying non-DK because the colors in the fingering weight were more cinnamon stitches than the one... Like, she had... I think the one thing she could have concentrated more on was having a balance of the colors between both bases because the colors that I really wanted were in the fingering, but I really wanted a DK base. Um, and maybe she did have those colors in the DK when she first set up and they sold out already. I don't know, but um, I really liked her yarn and I really liked her. She was really friendly and I really like that she lives in my city because I have no doubt that I could probably call her up and be like, hey, <laughs> can you dye me some of this color in a DK base? I have no doubt that she would probably do that. Um, her trunk show was the equivalent of probably my desk. She was on a table and she also had a stand-up thing. She had a ton of minis. And she had this colorway of minis that were just gorgeous and I almost bought them. But I was like, it's actually a better deal for me just to buy 100 gram skein than to buy three minis and it would have been the same price but the three minis would have been less yardage than it had I bought the 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 bigger hank so I went with the bigger hank even though it was not it was not the color I initially wanted I'm still not unhappy all right so this is one of the stores actually both of the stores I'm featuring today we're going to get rid of that. I don't need that bag anymore. I got two free gifts because I made the purchase. I don't know what their their free gift level was. If you spend a specific amount, you get a free knitting or a free darning needle. I'm go right in my drawer. Little man picked out red. And then I went above another level. And so I got a free notebook with their sticker on it. And it also had... An, what was supposed to be an ink pen attached to the notebook their ink pen was missing the pen so it was literally just the outside shell of the ink pen attached to it and there was no innards <laughs> we didn't realize that until actually after we left the store because little I gave, I told little man pick out the notebook he can keep it it was his free gift so he had his little notebook his little pen is attached right and he's looking he's like mom the ink pen part's missing I was like what are you talking about and he did that and literally, like, it was a hollow tube. It was, there was no ink pen. So I was like, here, I gave him my purple pen. I was like, here, just take my pen. And so he was drawing little notes and coloring in his book. But um, that was our free gift with whatever the level we reached. I don't even know how much I spent here. I mean, I wrote it down. All right. So I think over $100 you got the free notebook. 
not positive on that, but I think I, I spent just slightly over a hundred dollars at this store. But like I said, I was budgeting and if I had any extra money, I slid it onto the next store or the, the store that I really wanted to spend the money at. This store in particular, I, I also wanted to make it a point at at least one of the stores to show you if you're in a budget that you can afford maybe not a more expensive higher end local dyed yarn but they did have hanks for reasonable prices and so this is actually cascade i did not want first of all i don't generally buy solids i buy variegated um but they had a whole rack of neons and i was like yeah those are coming home with me because look at those colors right this is cascade this is cascade yarns heritage this is superwash merino nylon blend this hank was 13 dollars a piece so this is i wanted to make it a point to show you guys that you can buy yarn at a yarn shop that's not 30 dollars but you can buy one for 13 dollars if you're on a really small budget if you still want to participate in something like this and not spend $500, you can do that. You can absolutely. And Baba Sheep, I have yarn that I paid $8 for a hank. So that these two shops particularly, I made purchases to show you, hey, you don't have to have a million dollars to do a yarn crawl. So that was the purpose of these three. Well, one of the purposes is to show you, hey, you can do this on a much smaller budget but also like i bought them because the colors were beautiful and i wanted them this purple is looking more blue on camera it is absolutely purple it is not that shade of purple at all yeah it's looking much more blue on camera than what it is it's a it is a royal purple that that's kind of accurate um, these are the colorways and they, a lot of times they just put on here the color number. This is color 01, which is kind of like um, a slime green. This is color 06, which is a fluorescent pink. And this is color 02. Nope, that's a lot. I'm reading the lot number. This is color 5719, 5755. 5772 Highlighter Pink Violet Indigo This is where I need my glasses because it's really tiny. It's on the sticker from the store but not on the label. Highlighter Green So Gorgeous. $13 $13 a piece They are 437 yards. These are a fingering weight. Made in India. 75 superwash merino and 25% wool. This is the yarn from Fredericksburg Fiber that I decided to purchase. I highly suggest her yarn. She had beautiful, gorgeous colorways. She had a couple of colorways that were just absolute filled to the brim with sparkles. <laughs> And I wanted them, but um, I wanted I wanted fluorescence. I wanted bright. This isn't quite fluorescent, but it's fluorescent leaning, so it's not as bright as this. But it's very, very beautiful color, rainbow, and that's my jam. This is the stitch marker that we got from Center of the Yarniverse. Um, this is the color Autumn Rainbow. Caroline Street fingering is the base 80% and Caroline Street is one of the cities or one of the streets in downtown 80% uh, superwash merino 20% nylon 400 yards it's got a beautiful texture to it it's just a gorgeous gorgeous colorway really really enjoyed talking to her and getting her yarn and this was another trunk show that they were having this is trilogy fibers i have heard about trilogy fibers for years and years and years and i've never purchased from her she has a lot of really bright beautiful vibrant colors i have never seen her in store up to this point so 
I was very excited about that. And another, another, um, another local dye or another small dyer that they had at this store was. No, I wrote it in my notes because I wanted to look at them. It's not in here. I started. I think it was Z. I took a picture or a photograph. It'll be in the video. Keenan, Keenan. Matter of fact, that's the video. That's on my phone currently. Keenan Fibers was also another trunk show that was there. Bright, bright, vibrant colors. Really beautiful yarns. Um, I was really drawn to Keenan, but I was on a budget, and I had already reached my budget I already reached my budget so I could not purchase from Keenan but Keenan was beautiful colors and I believe Keenan is a Michigan dyer so I really I'm putting Keenan out there like check out Keenan Keenan first of all I'm supporting my Michigan businesses always because that's where I was born and raised and that's where my blood comes from but also beautiful beautiful colors of their yards I opted to go with Trilogy because this colorway just kind of it doesn't go with perfectly some of the other yarns but like it has it has some of the colors that were featured in some of the other yarns I have purchased so <laughs> I was trying to stick with the theme of colors and yarns that I would possibly put together and so that's why Trilogy Farm won out over Keenan was just because of the color that's the only reason because Keenan had beautiful, beautiful yarns. So Trilogies, this is their MCNDK base. And this colorway is Llamas in Drag. Beautiful, beautiful colors. Um, this is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, 231 yards. Hand dyed in Spokane, Spokane Washington beautiful beautiful colors so that is the first stop was center of the universe the next shop we went to she tried to get me to spend more money to get a free bag and i was like nope i'm out of money babe because this is the last shop i visited i was like no i'm not spending another 12 dollars to get a free bag <laughs> i ain't got the money we're good to go they were super nice. Like I said, Baba Sheep. This is Baba Sheep. Um, I got a free gift from them. What did I do with it? Here it is. Baba Sheep gave me a free gauge and color thing with their little logo on there, Baba Sheep. So that was one of my free gifts that I got from them. Again, I made a purchase to show you guys. These were $8.75 for hanks of yarn. So I could show you that you can absolutely buy beautiful hanks of yarn on a budget. <laughs> a much smaller budget. And still enjoy the yarn show. I bought three of these because these are low on yardage. These are Barocco Vintage Baby Hand Paint. This is the color Mixed Berries. This is 52% acrylic, 40% wool, 8% nylon, made in Peru. Uh, machine wash inside out in cold water. Why does it need to be inside out? How do you turn yarn inside out? I don't know. It is 50 grams, 145 yards. So that's why I bought three because it's very small yardage. It's very, very pretty. And I thought it would make something pretty. And I probably have yarn somewhere that I can mix with this that is also an acrylic wool blend. Or this actually feels kind of cottony, which is what I thought it was when I grabbed it. I have cotton that looks similar to this so i mean these are dk weight um eight dollars and 75 cents that's pretty good and they're beautiful colors so that was my other thing that i purchased i was like okay that's 
another thing we can show off this hey look you don't have to spend thirty dollars on a hank of yarn or forty some one of the ones i wanted was forty seven dollars i steered clear of that because like that's a lot of money for a hank of yarn but not to say it wasn't worth it it's just i was working within a budget the when i went to baba sheep i wanted one hank of yarn i planned on buying one hank of yarn because Baba Sheep's website is non-existent. It's non-existent. Um, there's no store to shop from unless they're supposed to be in their Their website does not have clickable links. It's literally just an information page. Their website is lacking. Their presence on social media is severely lacking. But the store is beautiful. They have a lot of really high-end stuff. A lot of really beautiful things, which is why I bought as much as I did when I really only went in for this. This is the only skein I planned on buying. I was like, I'm going to buy one, we're going to be done, and I'm going to walk out. And I definitely did not stick to my plan because this was the last shop of the yarn crawl that I visited. And I planned on visiting needing to be in Richmond after that. And I purchased more from the store because they were really friendly. Super friendly in there. I kind of got the impression that they were very more... Um, they geared more towards knitters than any other craft. Was my impression that I got from the conversations I had. They were welcoming to me with my other options of craft. Um, they saw that I had a crocheted shirt on. And automatically assumed I was also a knitter. I am a knitter, but they just assumed I was a knitter, which led me to believe that they probably are very much a knit shop and not just, you know, that they, they don't. It's not that they reject crocheters, but I just felt like it was a knit shop, if you get what I'm saying. That was just my impression. But like I said, they were very friendly. I told them that I'm a spinner. Um, very fascinated by the fact that I was a spinner. Um, I did buy fluff there. And this is name brand. And one of the things that I didn't want to do is buy a lot of name brand. Like Barocco or Heritage or Cascade or Malabrigo. But I really wanted to try the Malabrigo out. And the Malabrigo was half the price of the local dyers fluff that I purchased in yesterday's video. So... I'm not going to leave it on the shelf if it's literally half the price. And <laughs> it would blend beautifully with the purple that I bought yesterday. So that is why I purchased this. Because it kind of bridges the two of them together. And it adds some more colors and depth to this one. Now this one has silk in it. And the Malabrigo is just merino wool. But... I literally bought blended yarns. I don't see why these can't be blended together or if not blended together, I don't see why they can't be plied together. So with that, or even spun separately, it does not matter, but it was a pretty decent price. So this is Malabrigo Noob, which I think is funny because I'm a newbie. <laughs> and so they call, they call newbies noobs. Um, this is combed top hand dyed 100% merino wool, otherwise known as fluff. <laughs> it is color 866 Arcos Iris. And it's beautiful. And I'm going to take it out of its wrapper. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it out of its little cone. Because Mr. Cinnamon was like, that's really small compared. Right? I was like, it's actually really close in um ounces is really close they just like shoved it in this little tiny little container so we're gonna let it air out and fluff up because it feels very densely here i might have to cut that so that it can breathe because one thing i've noticed is that the fibers very easily compress and if you just let them inhale a little bit they will get softer and fluff up see that's folded over and like 
I'm gonna cut the string that's tying it. Oh look, it's a bracelet. Yeah, it's very densely compacted like that. Let's see if I can figure out how to open it. Can I open it? Can I open it? All right, somebody's gonna have to help me because I don't know how to do this. What in the world? I know it's got to be right here. I don't know how to get it apart. <sighs> Come on. Come on, Dova. All right, here's the end. Follow the end. Where's the end? It's not it. See how long it takes cinnamon stitches to figure out how to open her yarn. We're still not there yet. What the hell? Are we free? <gasps> we did it. Alright, the hair. That is very tightly compacted. There's our braid. Isn't that beautiful? So many. It is very, very densely, like, it's densely in there. So we're probably going to pull it apart and rebraid it. Because it is. It's so pretty. It's dense. It's like a machine did this. I don't know what color you would call that in there. Like, it's purple on the outside, but it's like sepia on the inside. <laughs> almost brown very pretty so as you can see it's very densely compacted in there isn't that beautiful see that looks so much prettier i don't know why they ball it up like that that's insane i'm gonna put that back around there and tuck it in tie it on something That makes me want to buy it more than it being bowled up. But that was my first purchase. See, and they can even hang it like that. Look at those colors. Beautiful. This, what color did I say? Arco Iris. That reminds me more of like a wild tornado or something, but really, really pretty colors. So I purchased that. Put that over there my scissors back I don't accidentally cut my yarn all right and the, the thing I went in there for was the rising tide fiber co rising tide is having a very small tiny little trunk show it was literally one twirly rack is what it looked like and it was right by the front door and I was really drawn in the zoom video that I'd mentioned it, I think yesterday to this rack because I was seeing like if this looked yellow on camera it's definitely not yellow. It's more orange. I mean, it's yellowy, but it's orange. And I saw this on the... I was like, okay, I don't have a whole lot of yellow. I don't have a whole lot of orange. And I really, really like that color. And so this is the first thing I grabbed and I walked around and then I was like, wait a minute, but this color is really pretty too. And it's also Rising Tide. Do they go together? No. I mean, they could. They absolutely could. Because look, the red pulls it together. And there's little bits of blue in here. Like these absolutely could, they probably will go on a project together. Because I'm not afraid to mix color. But oh my god, these are beautiful yarns. Rising Tide Fiber Companies. Check her out. Here's my little stitch marker. Even matches. Let's see if I can get it facing the right direction. By the way, the maker of these stitch markers, they followed me on the Instagram. Let's see if I can find them. I think it's Twin Mountains or something like that. Because they shared... Whoop. 
Twin Mountain Handcraft makes these amazing little cute little stitch markers. I follow them on Instagram. Their website is TwinMountainHandcrafts.com. They make the cutest stitch markers. So they made those for the yarn crawl. But they also have like, I don't know, like cute ones. Just cute ones. So they have wood ones that put your big girl panties on and deal with it. <laughs> That's just funny to me. <laughs> um, these ones are, looks like Christmas themed. They have bug ones that they're doing right now, which I'm all about the bugs. I would love some of their bug ones. Um, they have a, they had a clue, like the, the pieces from clue. That's not clue, but that's geometric shape. Like their stitch markers are really cute. So yeah, check out those them as well. They did the stitch markers. Um, Rising Tide. Her yarn is all very much similar to like this style. So you have dark parts, light parts with heavy speckling. And I'm definitely drawn to that. I think these are just beautiful, beautiful. So the yellow one is the color Fishbowl. But she had another one that was very similar to this with an autumn name. But I like the fishbowl better because the fishbowl has the blue on it. But the other one that was autumn didn't have the blue. But it was basically really similar to this color base. And then this one is Luck of Legend. These are 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. And these are both fingering weight. Absolutely beautiful. And then the last thing I bought. And the reason I bought this is because I was looking at it and I could tell that it was a spun product. And it's applied spun product. And I don't know if it was the shop owner or one of the workers was like, have you heard of Feederbrook Farms? And I was like, no. And she started telling me about Feederbrook Farms. It's a woman owned shop. It is, Feederbrook Farms is like a one, one woman show is what she, the way she described it to me. She owns the farm has the sheep, gets the wool from her sheep and surrounding farms sheep. She processes it, she dyes it, spins it, like the whole thing she does start to finish raising the sheep to spinning the sheep. Um, and so right off the bat, I was like, okay, I'm drawn to her because of that. I know, and I talked about this in Monday's video, I know how labor intensive it is to do this process. I only spin. I do dye yarn as well. So when you have a product that is a hand dyed product or a hand spun product and you're looking at the price tag like I don't want to pay $30 for that. Because of I because I know what it takes and I highly suggest you watch videos to see how to process wool because it is labor intensive. First of all, you're doing all the farming stuff to take care of the sheep, right? That's a lot of work. If you're not a farmer, you need to have respect for the farmers. Farmers are doing all of the hard stuff, okay? They're knee-deep shoveling crap. They're feeding. They're getting kicked sometimes. They're like, being a farmer is no joke, right? Props to any of you that have livestock, okay? If you got animals, if you got chickens, like, I I'm props to you. Thank you for keeping our world natural whatever thanks for keeping us fed even if you're feeding your own family like i want chicken so bad <laughs> i want to go and get fresh eggs out of my chicken coop um i want all the things i want to be a farmer i want to be farmer jen i think that would be just amazing it's a lot of work yes but I, i'm here for it right processing wool is a process it's days like days of work to get it to be spinnable days of backbreaking work you gotta wash this stuff and it's heavy and it's greasy and it's gross and it's filled with little poop balls you know it's gross then you dye it dyeing i i dye some of my own yarns dyeing is backbreaking work and it takes sometimes days to process yarn to dye it spinning while i love spinning and i personally find it relaxing 
I'm doing it for my own personal love of it. I cannot imagine spinning even on an electric spinner to get it to be even and perfect and like gorgeous like this. This is not only spun, but it's plied. So it's two colors spun together on top of it. So she spun two different yarns and then spun them a third time to spin them together. So she said, the lady at Baba Sheep, she said her price for her yarn is probably underpriced. It's a really good deal considering the work she puts into this. And another reason I was drawn to it is because even with it being away from my face, like it was like this in the shelf and I could smell it. <laughs> What does it smell like? It smells like hay and sheep. And I love, love that smell. And I love the colors. And being that I'm learning spinning, and I've been spinning for about a month now, I have such a greater appreciation for a hand spun yarn. And so, Feederbrook Farms. Feederbrookfarms.com. This is 270 yards, or 260 yards. It is a DK weight. It is 100% blue-faced blue Lester, which is a type of sheep wool the color is matrix it, like i said it's dk hand dyed made in the united states because she's in maryland i believe and printed on recycled paper hand wash only and these colors are beautiful and i'm looking up in my stash up there to see if i have any yarns that would go with this that i have dyed that i can mix with this I don't think I do, but that's an easy fix. And it smells very wooly. And I'm here for it. That is such a comforting smell to me, and I don't know why. I mean, I had a grandpa that lived down the street from us. And he had all kinds of fowl. He had a lot of birds. They had pigeons, ducks, pheasants um quail he had a lot of birds he had rabbits at some point i was not particularly close to my grandfather but i was at his house a lot because he literally lived down the street and i played i was playing with my cousin a lot and my cousin lived there and so i have a lot of really good memories of playing in the pigeon coops with my uncle <laughs> and take, helping him take care of his pigeons. And I have a lot of good memories of hiding behind the rabbit coop when I was about six or seven years old. Or it's it's a hutch when it's rabbits. Um, hiding behind the rabbit hutch and wandering through the, the rhubarb patch and stealing rhubarb and going in the house and cutting it up and eating it with salt. <laughs> like, I have a lot of good memories. We lived in the ghetto, okay? We lived in a really poor ghetto high crime high drug area and there was this cute little sanctuary in my grandfather's backyard that was like a farm and i think that's probably why i crave it and it might be why the smell of this is so comforting to me because it it was simpler times and while it was my grandfather's house my grandfather is not in most of those memories but yeah i love the smell of hay that comes from wool <laughs> just love it it's so pretty so um of the two shops i think they're about equal to me um i would go back to either one of the shops it was a fun experience everyone at both of those shops was super friendly i feel like maybe baba sheep is geared more towards knitters but i did not feel I didn't feel shunned because I'm a crocheter and I was very open at every shop when they asked me I can knit and crochet and weave and do I like I can do all of the yarn crafts I cannot needle felt I've never felted anything on purpose <laughs> I probably could if I tried but I've never done it I'm not really interested in that but I can pretty much do any of the yarn arts I very much prefer crochet and at every shop I've been to, I did not feel shunned in any way by that at all. Because I think, there, and I know for a fact, there are absolutely shops that cater more to knitters and assume you're a knitter and like, 
feel like they're better than the crocheters because they're a knitter. I know that those shops exist. I did not experience that this weekend. Baba Sheep did feel like it was more of a knit shop. All of their samples were knit. But I did not. And they assumed I was a knitter without me telling them. <laughs> she just said, you knit and crochet. Yes, I knit and crochet. I prefer crochet. A lot. I don't mind knitting. I don't hate knitting. I like knitting when I'm in the mood to knit. I prefer crochet. Crochet to me is in my heart. It just is in my heart. And I didn't feel critiqued for that at all because that was one of a lot of people mentioned that to me in a lot of comments about not feeling comfortable in those shops because you're a crocheter. Go anyway. Go anyway. Let them know wear your crochet in the shop. Let them see you. I got so many compliments on my two shirts that I wore and um, I let them know, oh, I designed this baby. <laughs> I designed this. This is a one of a kind. This is a. I, my brain is going to the movie. Girls just want to have fun. The Marie Sands Michelle original. This is a Cinema Stitches original. But yeah, really enjoyed. I really enjoyed the yarn crawl. I have one more um, haul video for you tomorrow, and that is covering the yarn club in Virginia Beach, and it is covering knitting bee in Richmond, Virginia. And my experiences at those stores, I saved those two for last and I paired them together because they are my favorite stores out of all of the stores. I would say a close third would be Dances with Wool and everyone else is just behind. The, the last three stores are like all, kind of all grouped together. They were, they were good stores. I have nothing to say bad about them except maybe they were small or they were tight or they were dark. Um, I preferred the two I'm going to show you tomorrow and I will absolutely go back to those time and time again and I will explain to you the reasons why that is in tomorrow's video but I do thank you so much for sticking with me through these videos and looking and sharing my experiences and giving you guys a little sneak peek into my world and what these yarn shops look like and felt like and my experience in them from the point of view of someone with neurodivergency from a point of view of someone who has severe sensory issues from the point of view of a crocheter in a knit knitting type environment all of those things so with that i'm gonna let you go and i will see you tomorrow bye guys this is just a quick overview of blah blah sheep in norfolk the um the camera makes it up here a lot brighter inside the store than what it is. It was it was really dim in there. It was beautifully decorated, but I do say in the video it was heavily geared towards knitters. But they had a lot of beautiful, gorgeous yarns. wide variety of brands as well that little tiny rack by the beginning of the aisle was their trunk show <laughs>